Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, we are going to read from verse 11. The Bible, it reads, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the Calabith tree, which was in opera, which belonged to Joash the Absalite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty men of valor. Now let's then skip to verse 21. Then the angel of the Lord put out the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread. And fire rose out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. And the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. It was God himself appearing in the form of an angel. The Bible reads, so Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Then the Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day, it is still in opera of the Absarites. Let us pray once more. Let me read verse 24 once more. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day, it is still in opera of the Absarites. Father, in the name of Jesus, be exalted, be glorified, be magnified. Your word declares you choose the weak things of this world. To shame the strong, the foolish, shame of the wise. So that Lord no flesh should glory in your presence. Your word declares let the weak say I am strong. Father we thank you for your word. Let the incorruptible seed edify, renovate, transform our minds. Let it cause us, Lord, to move from glory to glory in the name that is above all other names, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, without wasting any time, you know, I've been teaching, preaching from the book of Judges. And today, I want to zoom in there in verse 21 and verse up to verse 24. But it is important just to refresh our memory and to recap. Now, the Bible tells us when you read from verse 1 in this chapter, that the children of Israel, they sinned against the Lord. They committed apostasy, they rebelled, they transgressed, and they forsook their Lord God, who delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh, from the bondage of Egypt. They forsook the God who dried up the Red Sea, and they crossed over to pursue their destiny. Yes, they rejected their heavenly Father, who sustained and preserved them and fought for them in the wilderness. He gave them water when they were thirsty. He gave them meat when they were craving for meat. He led them with the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. That is the God that we serve. That is the God that we worship. That is the God that led them and delivered them from Egypt. 
Now the Bible gives us a clear picture that they forsook their God and the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Midianites as well as the Amalekites and the people of the East. They would oppress the Israelites. Now I spoke about the divine discipline of the Lord, how the Lord allowed the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the people of the East to prevail against the children of Israel. They were oppressed, they were bullied, yes, they were under the bondage of the Midianites. They were in their promised land, even though they were in the promised land, they rejected the promise keeper, they rejected the source of the promise, God himself. Hence, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the East, they advanced against the children of Israel. They prevailed against the children of Israel because the Lord, he had delivered them into the hand of the Midianites. Now, I want to encourage you that you revisit our previous messages and so that you can understand and better understand this context. Now, I'm going to continue then the Bible tells us, then they cried unto the Lord God. Even though they had built for themselves caves, dens and strongholds in the mountains. They ran for their lives to the dens, to the caves, to the strongholds, running away from the Midianites to a point where they cried out to the Lord and the Lord heard their cry. He sent a prophet to them and later in verse 11 the passage of scripture that we read the bible it tells us that the angel of the lord appeared to Gideon the Abzerite yes he was threshing wheat in the wine press hiding the wheat from the Midianites which means the children of Israel they would sow their seeds and during harvest time then the Midianites they would come and the Amalekites and snatch the harvest from them and destroy the produce of the earth and they would leave no sustenance for the children of Israel. So which means here we are speaking about people for seven years they were oppressed. For seven years they were hopeless. They were broken. They were under the bondage and the brutality of the Midianites and the Amalekites, as well as the people of the East. Now the Bible, it tells us something here in the book of Judges chapter 6, when we read from verse 20. Four. Let me read, let me start rather from verse 1. Then the angel of the Lord put out the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread. And fire rose out from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. And the Bible, it says, and the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. So Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Then the Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear. Hallelujah. You shall not die because you have seen the Lord God, the angel of the Lord. So Gideon built an altar. Now I want us to have here a picture. Uh, the Bible it tells us Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press, hiding the wheat from the Midianites in the wine press. Then the Lord spoke to Gideon and said, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. You warrior, the Lord is with you. And now later, Gideon, he prepared the unleavened bread, the meat, as to, I mean, for his guests, for the angel of the Lord, put it on the rock. And the Bible tells us from verse 1 that he was a whole 
wounding a staff and what did he do he touched the meat with the end of the staff and fire came out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread and the angel disappeared Appeared, hallelujah, and the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight in flames, the consuming fire appearing to Gideon. Lastly, before we take off, let me again give you this imagination. The meat is on the rock, the unliving bread on the rock, and Gideon preparing it for the angel of the Lord. Suddenly, as they have this conversation, then the angel of the Lord, with his staff, he touches the meat with the end of his staff, and fire came out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unliving bread, and he then departed out of his sight. And Gideon, the Bible tells us, then he perceived, mm, I have seen, hallelujah. And the Bible declares, he perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. And Gideon said, alas, 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 oh Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord. And he thought to himself, I am going to die, hallelujah. And remember, the verses before, the verses before, verse 21 and verse 22, it is Gideon reminding, I mean, his guests, the one who said to him, the Lord is with you, mighty men of valor. Then Gideon replied by saying, but if the Lord, oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, now it means at that moment, he perceived that this is someone who's sovereign. This is someone who is a Lord, not an ordinary person. Now he says, oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened? Why are we under the oppression? Why are we under the brutality? Why are we under the hand and the slavery of the Midianites if the Lord is with us? Because our forefathers, they told us about the miracles of our God, that is Jehovah Rapha, he is our healer. Our forefathers, they told us about the Lord God who dried up the Red Sea, who fought for them in Egypt and delivered them from the hand of the Egyptians and therefore if the Lord is with us why are we subjected under the intimidation, under the brutality, under the oppression of the Midianites then in verse 14 the Lord replies by saying go in this might of yours, you shall deliver you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites, have I not sent you. So in other words, I am going to give you the ability. I am going to give you the grace. When the Lord is saying, go in this might of yours, if he was not literally saying, your might, you can do it on your own. The Lord was simply saying, there's an ability, there's grace, there is power, not just power, divine enablement that I have endowed within you to set free the children of Israel. Therefore, you go, have I not commanded you? Now, I want you to have a picture of uh, this nation. They are oppressed. They are broken. They are hopeless. They are depressed. They are living in fear to a point where they have built dams and caves and strongholds in the mountains for their own safety, for their own protection. But even though they had dams and caves and strongholds, they were still subjected to the intimidation, to the brutality, to the oppression of the Midianites. Then the Bible tells us that the angel of the Lord, I'm repeating it for the third time now, that he was holding his staff. He touched the meat with the end of his staff. The meat and the unleavened bread that was on the rock. Fire came out of the rock and consumed the 
sacrifice. And the Bible tells us, then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Now immediately as he departed, he thought he's going to die because he has seen the angel of the Lord. Now I want you to mark these words. The Lord said to him, peace be with you, for you shall not die. Do not fear, for you shall not die. Because where the peace of the Lord is, fear of the unknown, hallelujah, cannot invade your soul anymore. Intimidation cannot invade your soul anymore. Anymore. Depression cannot invade your soul anymore and you shall not die. You shall live. Don't be afraid of death. You shall live. Don't be afraid of intimidation. You shall live. Don't be afraid of fact that we have seen the angel of the Lord and you think you are going to die. Don't be afraid. And the Bible declares Gideon, he built an altar. An altar is a place of sacrifice. An altar is a place of worship and altar it is a place of praise and altar it is a place where humanity meets divinity and altar it is a place where the Bible tells us in the book of Leviticus chapter 6 that fire must not go out of the altar fire must continually burn hallelujah there should be not be an hour where there is no fire on the altar no minute where there is no fire on the altar, no day where there is no fire on the altar. That's what the Lord commanded them, that fire must continually burn, hallelujah. The fire of prayer, the fire of praise, the fire of sacrifice, the fire of worship, the fire of praise. Fire shall not go out. He even tells them in the book of Leviticus chapter 6, that priest, you must see to it that early in the morning you must take wood, you bear that wood where on the altar it was not just divine fire from the Lord that will consume it, but the Lord will also ensure that priest, you must be dedicated, you must be diligent to wake up early in the morning to ensure that you put wood on the altar so that fire does not go out on the altar because the altar was the place of sacrifice and Gideon he built an altar hallelujah he built an altar and then he says indeed you are the Lord the Lord rather is peace you are Jehovah Shalom hallelujah whenever you hear Jehovah you must understand that you are speaking about the God who reveals himself whenever you say Jehovah you must understand that you are speaking about a God who moves through a progressive revelation whenever you say Jehovah you must understand that you are speaking about a God whose I am who I am hallelujah whenever you say Jehovah you are speaking about the Redeemer and the covenant keeping God and his covenant he will not break with his children whenever you say Jehovah it means you are speaking about the God who reveals himself the names of God they reveal God's purpose each name it has its own purpose. Each name, it has its own plan. Each name, it has its own power. And that's why the Bible, it tells us Haga at the point of being dehydrated, at the point of succumbing to the, to, to, to the power of death and hopelessness. And the Bible declares he, she, she looked away from Ishmael because she thought, let me not look at Ishmael. I mean, breathing his last breath, the Lord God Almighty, he appeared to Haga. And when Haga speaks, she says, you are Elroy, hallelujah. You are the God. You are mighty and strong. Whenever you hear L E L, L means He's mighty and strong. That is our God. You are the Lord that 
sees. He is the God that sees. Atu shabelo no matosa. Ili sholake liyabona kuzo zonkin tis. In true, a singing a kuzo. What is this sholake? Ili sholake liyabona. Now, Haka is saying, You are the Lord that sees. And the Bible, even in the book of Genesis, when Abraham, he built an altar on Mount Moriah, and then he said, you are the Lord, hallelujah, my provider, Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides, hallelujah, the Lord spoke and said, Abraham, do not slaughter Isaac, there is a lamb tied up by its horns on the bush. And Abraham, he took the ram and sacrificed it on the place of Isaac, child of the living God. This story was the shadow of Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but receive everlasting life. His own arm brought deliverance, brought salvation, brought redemption. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, he is the extension of God's hand. The Lamb of God that was slain, that was bruised, that was wounded, that was pierced on the cross for our sins. For he foreknew no sin and he was made to be seen so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. The Lamb of God. We have been purchased not by silver, not by gold, but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God without blemish. And we see Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. Providing a lamb for himself. That's what Abraham said as they were going up the mountain. Isaac said, Then I can see the wood. I can see the 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 the, 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 the the sword, I can see everything for the sacrifice except a lamb. Where is the lamb? I can see the light, but where is the lamb? And Abraham said to his servants, you wait for us here whilst we go, hallelujah, and worship the Lord on the mountain top, and we are going to return back to you. That's what Abraham said. We are going to return even though he knew that the Lord had said, sacrifice your son. But he said to his servants, we are going to come back. Hallelujah. And he said to Isaac, the Lord will provide for himself a lamb. Indeed, the Lord provided for himself a lamb. When you need provision, when you need divine providence, when you need the Lord to come, hallelujah, I mean, forth, you, you know where who to call. You call Jehovah, Jireh, but I am not there. I want us to see today that the scripture before us, it is Gideon saying, there the Lord is peace. Now, the Lord is peace. Jehovah, Shalom. When he says Jehovah, Shalom, it means the Lord is peace. The Lord is my wholeness. The Lord is my health. The Lord is my security. The Lord is my prosperity. The Lord is my peace. Hallelujah. That's what it means when you say Jehovah, Shalom. He is my health. He is my wholeness. He is my security. He is my prosperity. He is my peace. The Lord is peace. Child of the living God, before Shalom appeared to Gideon, Gideon was not praising. Gideon was not worshipping. Gideon did not build an altar. But immediately when the Lord had appeared to Gideon, he built an altar and began to worship. Let me tell you something. Child of the living God. Peace does not mean absence of problem, absence of pain, absence of pressure. Peace, the peace of God, it doesn't mean absence of the problem of pressure and of pain, but the peace of God, it insulates you in the midst of that problem. It insulates you in the midst of that pain. It insulates you in the midst of that pressure. 
Hallelujah. That is the peace of God. The peace of God. It propels you, hallelujah, to say through the problem, through the pressure, through the pain, without losing your sanity, without losing, hallelujah, your health, without losing your security, without losing your faith, because Peace insulates your spirit, insulates your mind, and it propels you through that problem, through that pressure, and through that pain. That is the power of peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is peace. Suddenly, a man that was a hiding, a man that was threshing wheat in the wine press, we see this man building, hallelujah, an altar, an altar for worship. He worships the Lord before deliverance takes place. He worships the Lord in the midst of intimidation. He worships the Lord in the midst of brutality. He worships the Lord in the midst, hallelujah, of pain and pressure and the problem they were faced with. He built an altar and said, now I will praise you. I will worship you for you are shalom. The Lord Lord is a peace. You have brought a wholeness in my brokenness. You have brought security in my insecurity. Hallelujah. You have brought peace in my mind. My mind was afflicted with anxiety. My mind was afflicted with stress. My mind was afflicted with the depression and bipolar. My mind was afflicted with intimidation. My heart was afflicted with a panic attack because I would be thrashing wheat in a wine press, checking the ghost, checking whether the Amalekites and the Midianites and the people of the East are not here. They have not yet arrived. For we knew that whenever it's harvest time, it's not the time for us to rejoice and to be excited and make our feasts as usual, the feast of harvest, and we get excited. We knew harvest time means pressure. Harvest time means pain. Harvest time means brutality. Harvest time means brokenness. And now we see Gideon. He builds an altar. He begins to worship his God. Hallelujah. He praises his God. Do you know why he's praising? His God, it is because of his awareness now that the Lord is for me. The Lord is with us. If the Lord is for me, if the Lord is with us, who can be against us? He's with us and he's for us. Hallelujah. When you repent, child of the living God, hallelujah, he comes. He heard their cry as they were repenting. He heard their cry as they were crying. He heard them as he heard them in Egypt. When they cried, he heard them. He heard them and sent Moses to deliver them. Hallelujah. And the Lord heard their cry and he built an altar. Now knowing very well that Shalom Peace, prosperity, security, wholeness, hallelujah, is within me. Mm. When do we worship? When do we praise? Do we praise and worship because we have received the breakthrough? No. Peace propels you to build an altar and worship, hallelujah, and worship because he began to build an altar. <laughs> Sorry. And to worship his God. And what does that mean? From weakness to worship. From willingness to worship. That's what Gideon did. Hallelujah. He was weak, but he worshipped him. He was weary, and he worshipped him. From worry to worship the power of the divine peace of God. We see Gideon here. He's no longer worried about the Midianites, about the Amalekites, about the people of the East. 
hallelujah, about his limitations and impossibilities. Because Shalom is with me, is with us, is for us. And therefore, from worry to worship, from weakness to worship, from willingness and exhaustion, hallelujah, to worship, we see a man that was exhausted, exhausted rather, being exhausted by God, the Lord encouraging him, the Lord pouring courage and boldness and courage rather in his spirit. He built an altar and began to praise and began to worship and began to glorify his God. That's what peace does. It propels us to worship in the midst of that problem, in the midst of that pressure, in the midst of that pain. Peace insulates our mind. Peace insulates our heart and we begin to build an altar to worship our God, to praise our God, to exalt our God, to magnify our God. Why? Because now he knows that the God of miracles is with me, that the God of miracles is with us, that that same God who is a man of war, he's with us. That God who dried up the Red Sea, he's with us. That God that broke the power of the Egyptians and Pharaoh, he's with us. That God that made the chariots of Egypt to drown and their soldiers in the Red Sea, he's with us. And therefore, he builds an altar. He's not waiting for deliverance to take place from the hand of the Midianites. He is content. He is satisfied. He is secured because God's peace brings security. Hallelujah. In your insecurities, he begins to praise him. He worships him. The Bible declares, let everything that has breath praise the Lord our God. The Bible declares, I will bless the Lord at all times in the midst of that crisis he builds an altar never allow crisis to uproot your altar never allow crisis to take you away and detach you away from the altar because if, 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 if the, the, the problem it takes you away you get detached from the altar it means it isolates you to suffocate you and, and victimize you away from the presence of the almighty God. Hallelujah. He built an altar in the midst of that crisis. I will praise you. The Bible declares he, have, he has ordained praises in the lips of babes to silence the enemy and the avenger. Hallelujah. He has ordained praises in the lips of babes. The Bible declares the fruit of our lips is praise. Gideon, he builds an altar. He says, the Lord is a peace. Hallelujah. Don't neglect your personal altar. Don't neglect your family altar. Hallelujah. It must continually burn. And the Bible tells us here, Gideon, he builds this altar and we see exactly what the Bible tells us in Isaiah 61, where the Bible tells us in verse 3, what the Lord our God does. Let us go and read it. Let me not quote it. Let me read it. Isaiah 61, for the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. And the Bible, it tells us here, to proclaim, let us go to verse 3, to console those who mourn in Zion. Mark this, mark this, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Let us read it again. The Bible because to give them beauty for ashes, hallelujah, to give them, we see shalom. When shalom appeared to Gideon, instead of insecurity, 
He gave him security. Instead of brokenness, the ashes of insecurity and brokenness, he gave him wholeness for brokenness. Instead of the ashes, hallelujah, of shame and the ashes of, of hopelessness, he gave him beauty, hallelujah, dignity and hope. Instead of cowardice, he gave him courage, he gave him boldness, he gave him a brave heart. Hallelujah. He gives us beauty for ashes. Instead of worry, we see it from Gideon. Instead of worry, Gideon began to worship the Lord. Instead of weariness in his soul, he began to worship the Lord. Instead of being weak and succumbing to the intimidation of the enemy and bearing his destiny and his hope and his dream, we see it in this scripture that the Bible tells us the Lord, Shalom, 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 brought peace and stability in his life. Hallelujah. He began to worship. The Bible declares the garment of praise, Mother, the garment of praise. The minute when Shalom arrived, the garment of depression, hallelujah, was taken away. The garment of limitation and impossibility was taken away. The garment, hallelujah, of brokenness and hopelessness was taken away. And the Bible declares here, he gives us the garment of praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. The spirit of heaviness, it is the spirit of discouragement. The spirit of heaviness, it is a spirit of being pessimistic. You are, I mean, whatever that you, you, you are negative, you think negatively. Everything you perceive it negatively. You anticipate negative things. You are just pessimistic. To be pessimistic, it means it takes you away from optimism. Pers to be pessimistic, it means there's no way that you can be optimistic if you think negative, if you, if you, if you anticipate negative things, you speak negative words, and your actions, they begin to be negative, and your life begins to be surrounded and overwhelmed by negativity because you are not optimistic, which means you are not positive, you don't think positively, you don't speak positively. Hallelujah. And the Bible, it tells us that Gideon, he built an altar unto the Lord and he began to praise him. He began to worship him. He began to glorify him. He began to exalt him in the midst of that crisis. I am here to tell you, maybe you are saying, I am going through pressure. I am going through pain. I am going through a problem, a peril. Peril means dangerous circumstance. I don't see myself making it through this predicament. But I am here to tell you, you have Jehovah, Shalom, who gives you peace in the midst of turmoil and confusion and chaos, who gives you peace that surpasses all understanding. The Bible tells us, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Because Gideon, they were anxious. And he was anxious before Shalom appeared to him. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, prayer and peace, they are inseparable. Hallelujah. Because prayer, it simply says, Lord, I cannot do without you. I need your divine intervention. Prayer invites uh, the infinite God, hallelujah, to intervene in time. Because he's not bound by time. But prayer, 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 prayer invites him in our lives. Prayer brings God's hand over our lives and supplication. It means this is not just prayer. This is an earnest prayer. This is a fervent prayer. 
prayer. This is not just a prayer. This is the prayer of transferring the burden of your soul into the hands of God. Be anxious for nothing. There's a burden in your spirit. There's a burden in your soul. There's pain in that soul. There's pain in that heart. Like a she prayed and supplicated, hallelujah, where in the house of the Lord, in Shiloh, to a point where Eli thought that she was drunk. No, she was not drunk, the maid servant of the Lord. She was only transferring her painful burden, the burden of her soul. She was pouring it and transferring it into the hands of the Lord. Old. Because when you pray and supplicate, you understand that the battle is not mine, but God's. When you pray and supplicate, you understand I have a defender, I have a vindicator. When you pray and supplicate, it means, Lord, I'm transferring this battle into your hands. For the battle is not mine, but God's. And the Bible declares with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and when we do that shalom, hallelujah the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, that is the peace of God, be anxious for nothing, prayer and supplication, what it does it simply, you are casting your cares unto him, for he cares for you. You are casting your anxiety. You are casting your fears. You are casting your insecurities. You are casting your brokenness. You are transferring the burden of your heart and of your soul into the hand of God for He cares. He will never leave us nor forsake us and He begins to give us peace that I mean, surpasses all understanding. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I've got fear whether I will make it tomorrow. I've got fear whether I will make it through this sickness and disease. I've got fear whether I will ever be employed. I've got fear whether I will ever be able to finish this degree. I've got fear whether I will be able I mean, to keep this marriage until death do us apart. I've got fear, but in the midst of that, be overwhelmed in your heart. He leads you to the rock. Hallelujah. Lead me, oh God, to the rock that is higher than I. That's why the Bible declares, you go and tell my enemies. Hallelujah. There is a rock, and this rock is higher than I. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. When negativity seeks to overwhelm you. You have Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. He gives you peace that surpasses all understanding. Mm. Hallelujah. When the, the floods and the raging of the seas, hallelujah, seek to overwhelm you, the Bible declares it is God who comes the storm. It is God who makes the waves to be still. Hallelujah. It is God who rules over the raging. Hallelujah. See, it is God who causes the waves to be still. Hmm. And another psalmist says, it is God, hallelujah, who does what? Who silences the floods, not just the floods, the voices of the floods and the waves. And now, as I'm speaking to you, there are voices, there are floods of voices. You won't make it. There are floods of voices. You shall backslide and go back to sin and be a slave of sin. There are voices that are they, they, they are louder than the voice of your destiny. They are louder than the voice of hope. They are louder than the voice of your vision. They are louder than the voice, hallelujah, of the Lord. Why? Because you have paid attention to negative voices. But the Bible declares it is Jesus that woke up and rebuked the seas and rebuked the waves. Hallelujah. He said, 
peace to be still. He spoke peace to the waves. He spoke peace to the storm. He spoke peace to the winds. Hallelujah. That were boisterous against the boat. And there was a peace. Shalom. He speaks peace. Peace in your storm. Hallelujah. You are going through a storm. And when Shalom comes, he speaks peace to the raging seas in your emotions, in your heart. He speaks that peace. And that peace, it guards our minds and hearts in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From pain to peace. From pressure to to peace, from problem, to peace, and this peace is not absent, this peace is not eradicated by the problem, by the pressure, by the pain, but what it does, it makes you resolute in the midst of that storm, it makes you, it propels you to worship, it propels you to be still and know that I am God, this Peace, it gives you the divine voice of security that says, to, don't worry, hallelujah, you shall not die, don't be afraid, you shall not die, you shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, don't be afraid, you shall run the race, you shall finish the race, you shall keep the faith, you shall transfer the legacy of truth, of faith to the next generation, don't be afraid, I I am with you, child of the living God. This is the peace that David had. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For the Lord God is with me. He delivers the righteous out of all the afflictions. He's faced with. Hallelujah. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that we praise. He builds an altar. Because peace that surpasses all understanding had invaded his soul, had invaded his heart, and brought wholeness, and brought peace, and brought prosperity, and brought, hallelujah, hope, and courage in his weary soul. He began to worship in his weakness. He began to worship, hallelujah, in his worry. He began to divorce worry. He began to evict worry. He began to evict anxiety. He began to evict depression. He began to, ev to evict intimidation. Because peace that surpasses all understanding. Jehovah Shalom had arrived. Hallelujah. To reveal himself to Gideon. In Isaiah chapter 26, the Bible declares, You shall keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Hallelujah. And the only thing that we need to do to keep this peace that surpasses all understanding. It is to ensure that our minds, hallelujah, they stay in him. He is the overseer and the shepherd of our souls. According to the narrative of Peter the Apostle, inspired by the Holy Spirit, that he is the overseer and the shepherd of our souls. Isaiah is saying, as long as your soul is kept by your shepherd, as long as Shalom has your soul, he will keep you in perfect peace. Like Job, you lose your children, you are in, you are in perfect peace. You lose your silver and gold, you are in perfect peace. They betray and reject and force accuse you and frame you, you remain in perfect peace. Peace and it causes you to, it propels you to, 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 to execute God's purpose for your life. You praise Him, hallelujah, because peace sustains you. He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed, hallelujah, on Him. How do you ensure that your mind is stayed in Him? Is by him, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is praiseworthy, meditate on such things, and the God of peace will guard you, and the God of peace will defend you, and the God of peace will fight for you, because your mind 
mind it is sick and set on whatever that is good, admirable, and true, and pure, and praiseworthy. Hallelujah. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. That's what Paul is saying. Christ rose from the dead when he ascended. You also ascended with him. Your lives are hidden in Christ in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. And therefore, set your mind on things above whose mind you shall keep in perfect peace, whose mind is set on things above, not on earthly things. That's why the Bible declares, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. Do not conform unto the standards and the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of the mind. Hallelujah. Let the mind be renovated by the word of the Lord. Let the mind be transformed by the word of the Lord. Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. This man is blessed. He does not sit in the seat of the scornful, the judgmental, the, 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 the degrading the demeaning, hallelujah, those with a red pen, the seat of the scornful, and he does not stand in the path of sinners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Day and night he meditates upon the law of the Lord. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, but whatever he does, it prospers. This man goes through storms, goes through wilderness, goes through pressure, problem, and pain, but peace makes him to be still. Peace makes him to be resolute in his godly convictions. Peace sustains him. Peace propels him to praise God. Hallelujah. Because his mind is stayed on him. He has made the mind the dwelling place of God's weight. The permanent resident of God's way. He meditates. You see, the Jews, when they meditate, they don't just uh, close, their, they don't, they don't close their eyes and then they say, mm -hmm. waiting for the peace that will come from within. There's no peace that comes from within. It is God who is peace, who brings peace within. Hallelujah. When you meditate, they say, Oh God, so love the world that he gave his only God his son. But who said he should not perish, but receive the everlasting life. For God so loved the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for God so loved the world. Hallelujah. That whoever believes in him, in Christ, that he gave uh, his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but receive the everlasting life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you are meditating on the scripture, you are memorizing it. You are speaking it. You are memorizing it. You are speaking it. Hallelujah. You, it's a chapter. You speak. You feel up. You speak it. You speak it. It's not like... Mm, 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 mm. I, can, I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. Because I'm meditating upon it. I am thinking about it. I am, process, I, I am processing the word of God in my mind. And I'm also declaring it. Hallelujah. I'm whispering this word. I'm speaking this way. That is meditation. Because it will be wrong to think about it and not speak it into your situation. Hallelujah. And therefore, whose mind is stayed on you, you shall keep that person in perfect peace. That's why God said to give to, to, to Joshua, you can do this as I was with Moses. I will be with you. You can do this. You can achieve this. You can lead the children of Israel in possessing their destiny, their promise. Why? Be courageous and be strong. Do not allow this book of the law to depart from your mouth. Meditate, eat it day and night. 
If you do that, you shall have good success. Hallelujah. You shall prosper. You shall make your way successful, prosperous. I am with you. Meditate upon this word. The Bible tells us whose mind is stayed on you. You shall keep him in perfect peace. And that's why the Bible declares unto our God who is able to keep us from stumbling and falling and present us faultlessly before the presence of the soon coming king, before the presence of the king of kings, our heavenly father. He keeps us from falling. He keeps us from stumbling. He keeps us from throwing the towel. He keeps us from sinning. Hallelujah. I have hidden thy weight in my heart so that I might not sin against God. The way it keeps us, our God keeps us from indulging and fulfilling the desires of the flesh. We ought to keep this peace. Romans chapter 8 verse 6. The Bible tells us for to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded it is life and what? And peace. Can you see? It is life and, and, and peace because this word is saturated in God's word, in God's presence. Hallelujah. Your thinking it is influenced by the word, by the spirit of God. Life is within you. Peace is within you because Shalom, God himself is with you. Hallelujah. Give your bills an altar. It says the Lord is Shalom. Because brokenness is not my portion. Hopelessness is not my portion. Cowardice is not my portion. Intimidation is not my portion. Temptation to indulge in sin is not my portion. But peace is my portion. Wholeness is my portion. Prosperity is my portion. Health is my portion. Boldness is my portion. Hallelujah. And then now he begins to build that altar. But I am here to tell you, child of the living God, God. It says now, no more, no more, no more. That's the declaration that I have from reading this from reading this context. No more, no more. Because the Israelites, they would sow and the Midianites, they would come during the harvest time to destroy their produce. Hallelujah. The Amalekites and the Midianites and the people of the East, they are no longer going to snatch. They are no longer going to steal your harvest your breakthrough, your healing, your blessing with your name on it. Why? Because Shalom is with you to defend, to protect you. Let me tell you something. The Bible declares Gideon rose up to be the deliverer of the children of Israel to be finished on Wednesday. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We bless you. We honor you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Thank you, Lord, for your word. That Lord, you are shalom. You are our peace. You are our security. You are our prosperity. You are our wholeness. Lord, you bring peace in our problems. You bring peace in our pain. You bring peace, Lord, in our pressure. You bring it, Lord. And it propels us to move from worry to worship, from weakness to worship, from weariness of the soul. To worship you. We bless your name and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Today you can have this peace of God. Because Christ, he broke the middle wall of hostility, of sin that separated us from our God. The Bible declares the ear of the Lord is not deaf to hear, nor his hand short to save. But our sins and trespasses they have separated us from our God, Jesus, for he knew no sin. And he was made to be seen, so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but receive everlasting life. For the Son of Man did not come 
to condemn the world, but he came that the world through him might be saved. Today, you can be saved. You can have peace with God through Jesus Christ who paid uh, the price on the cross. He paid the price on the cross. He shed his own blood for the remission, for the forgiveness, in other words, of our sins. You can believe with your heart, confess with your mouth, and you shall be saved, shall become a child of God, if that's what you want. Would you, would you kindly pray after me? If you want to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, please pray after me, say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for the precious gift of eternal life. I am the child of God. I am no longer a sinner. I receive the peace of God. Because I've got peace with God. Amen. 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 We are going to continue with this message. He built the altar and said, The Lord is peace. His shalom. We can see Gideon no longer manipulated, no longer controlled by the problem, by the pressure or the pain. But we see Gideon praising him because peace propelled him to build an altar and to praise him and to worship him because he reckoned that it's not the den, it's not the cave, it's not the stronghold that we have built for ourselves that will bring us peace and the victory. But it is Shalom, our peace, our security, our wholeness, our Redeemer, and the covenant keeping God. May the Lord actually bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine on you and be gracious in you, and give you his peace. May he enlarge your territory. May his hand be upon you. May he keep you from evil. May he bless you indeed. God bless you. Thank you very much. This is Faith and Cut Church. Our vision is reaching the unreached through anchored lives in Christ. Our lives are anchored in Him. Our families are anchored in Him. Our hope is anchored in Him. Our faith is anchored in Him. And our church is anchored in Him. God bless you.